Hey, Hans. Hey, Bettin. <laughs> Uh, we're here to uh, to celebrate uh, the, the the launch of the new book of Betty archive. Uh, I'm Hans Gemme. I did the design and uh, editing for the book, and a uh, graphic designer based in Amsterdam. And in March last year, uh, Michael Mack approached me if I was interested in diving into the archive of Bertin um, to. Yeah, basically it was almost like carte blanche. And um, and then uh, I met Bertine and simply started working. And we will talk today a bit about how that process was for both of us. And um, so I would like to introduce you to Bertine, who is also here. Uh, and that's, uh, Max sent us a few questions, which I think is nice to go through uh, and then I think we will just basically read out the question and then start answering it and then let's see where it takes us. Uh, so, hey Bertin. <laughs> shall, I the first question? shall I read the first question for you? And then, oh, you want to say something yeah, introductional? Yeah. Okay. Um, could you describe how this book, Archive, came about? What was the experience uh, bringing together five decades of work and were there surprises and challenges Two. Uh, that's a lot of questions in one yeah <laughs> well it, it started right because i had this uh, i had an exhibition in the stedelijk museum in amsterdam and we wanted a catalog and um, meg wanted to, to make a catalog but it was a bit perhaps um he didn't realize that this would be a lot of work so um he he wanted to have somebody who lived in Amsterdam because that would be more easy because it would be necessary to see each other a lot and talk about and Hans wanted to go through my archive so um, then Hans was selected by Mac as um, the one who would design the book and so um, he took about a year for this so never became the catalog because the <laughs> exhibition is already finished but um, it is a fantastic book now because just because Hans put so much effort in it and uh, and when he really went he, he came every week and um, we had this gatherings together and he went through my archive and well what was the second question again how it was to bring together uh, five decades of work. Yeah, well, Hans did that, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's overwhelming because you don't realize that you did so much. And uh, then all of a sudden you see it. All your work in a book, it's, it's fantastic. And, uh, and I think Hans did a great job. It's really, I'm so proud of it. I'm so happy with the book. So, um, yeah, and it was fun, I think, also to do. Uh, it was, for me, it, it was a, uh, it was this strange year uh, with the COVID started. Yeah, we started uh, one, I think our first meeting was that we were um, doubting if, if we should give hands. And I thought you said, so we were, it was really the point of what's coming and what we didn't know. And that was exactly the moment we started. And then the first weeks we thought maybe we should, meet and, and, and but then it be became this in this strange year where everything was sort of like silent uh, like we had this weekly routine like every Thursday morning I come in like 10 30 or something with mask uh, yeah with a mask and with gloves but then, uh, but the gloves was also good because I was touching all the the negatives so it's better to to have that anyway so that, that was sold as well but um, uh, now it, it so it was surreal, but but super nice as well. I think to uh, it was it was one of the few routines I had in the whole year. I don't know how it was for you, but it gave some structure, and there was also something I was really looking forward to to because it I I it was so much I had to do it part by part, and in in my case it works that that at a certain point also if in a, in a museum. Sometimes you have these days that you can only handle one or three rooms and then you're saturated because of all the visual information. 
it was the same year that I was simply working as long as I could, but it was yeah maybe one or two binders uh, every week, and then uh, I had to stop because there was so much information to process. Um, but that that was yeah I, I really enjoyed it. This this also this uh, aspect of uh, meeting every week and 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 uh, simply continuing. Yeah, and it was, for me, it was great to see that Hans, Hans um, found all sorts of uh, images and stories that I didn't remember and that didn't, have, didn't remember having taken. And well, just when I saw the, the images, I, I of course remembered, but they were never published. And well, anyway, a lot of new things came out. That was surprising. It, it was also nice to you were. Uh, in the room also working on your own things and, 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 and email and uh, but you were always available and uh, then sometimes uh, I remember this uh, I was I was into the avalanches project uh, from from the from the USA and I was looking for the specific image of these two boys who play with a gun and I thought I had it but then you pointed out no it's the one next to it because you have a whole series of, of uh, I, I mean, maybe 20 pictures of them and, and then they, they, they turn around and then it was really nice because you immediately I asked or you pointed out that I didn't have the right one and then uh, you started telling how that that, uh, that you were back in the moment and you shared it with me that was quite nice because I think they had an argument or something about who should shoot or they both wanted or do you remember? Who had the gun? So yeah, 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 <laughs> and that that was really nice too, and I also felt very privileged to um, to be able to see also so many new things. Also, of course, many things I knew, um, and to be able to ask you anything, you were very open, and uh, you also didn't uh, say you cannot look at that folder or that. Uh, you you gave me full access, and and. It was uh, very um, uh, special. Uh, and then I think I'll, I'll just, for the, the sort of structure, uh, there's a question for me. How did you approach this design process? process uh, and where were your guideline principles? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, in that sense, this was on many levels for me a very different project because usually um well usually when i start there's i i have this sort of barrier that that uh, i i i almost dislike to start a new project and because i simply don't know what to do in general then i feel very um almost vulnerable that i think i, I have no clue what to do with this kind of material then i get a folder from somebody and then and my way of dealing with that is and i know it's it's with every project and it, it, it's the first week mostly that I'm working on a new project that I that I have this this uh, sort of almost yeah I, I don't I simply don't know how to start and um, and then I, I just start and then it's for me designing is really like a working process I simply start putting things in order and then I see what works and what doesn't work and then. Uh, the, the whole project will evolve in a natural way. But in this case, this was completely different because I, I somehow cannot really remember that I started designing. I was just going to the team, looking at as many uh, folders as I could. And one day, then I went back to my studio and processed all these images because I made images with my iPhone to remind me what I was looking at and then try to catalog that and archive that. And I was doing it every Thursday. So looking, archiving, but then also immediately thinking about what was I looking at. And the one week I would focus on a specific series, other week I would focus on, on special notes that that you would make on, on, on your uh, sheets or uh, there were little scribblings there. And I, or even the, we talked about the first stamps you got with your address and, and these, all this, all this information I tried to process and then, 
yeah, as I said, I cannot really remember starting because it just happened and it, it was, it felt very natural. And this was for me, it started more as a thinking process than, than, than as a working process, but it was, it was really both. And it's, it's a bit the same feeling now that I also still don't have the feeling that it, that it's, I mean, the book is there, but it's also feels that it's not finished yet. So, um, <coughs> also nice that now started working on your website and thinking about maybe doing an exhibition in, in, in the space at my studio and it's for it's it's not finished yet I think it's it's just it's starting <laughs> the book is finished and that's that's really nice but it uh, feels also as a, as a it was a beautiful first step I think yeah I I miss uh, I miss our um, meetings on Thursday so I hope we will we'll continue to do something yeah, we will after the summer i think i will be back <laughs> and we will think of things to do yeah look forward to that oh yeah about the text collected in this book uh, there are uh, diary extracts uh, for the, uh, the the china part the america part the russia part and but there's also um they, they uh, form a kind of autobiography um, but there's also other text involved, and could you maybe say something about that? Um, I think oh. people should read it. Okay, that, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is um, something I can't talk about. It's uh, very personal. But um, there's so I think there's also another question in how far is is his photo book uh, and taking pictures autobiographical? Mm -hmm. And of course it is, it's always about uh, the person who's taking the picture, all it's about yourself, but you're not aware of it, it's not a conscious thing. Um, but I think, um, if I may name an example, this um, picture, Tom's on the railway station from on the summer's hundred winters, this woman lying on a bench and a lot of snow behind her and she's lying with her back Towards the, 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 the person who's looking. And um, I think, well, afterwards you could say, I was that in, at that period, it was a very bad period for me. So it, it's about telling it something about myself without me, me wanting telling, taking this picture. But it is very funny, and you have always pictures in your head. and. Uh, they are about yourself and if you see a certain thing you don't have to think about it you just take the picture because you know that's exactly what you're looking for you know know at the first moment you see it and um, I hope you understand what I mean because uh, it is uh, a very impulsive and intuitive uh, thing and how does it work then because you uh, you 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 travel and then you come back and then you have all these films. You develop them when you're back in the Netherlands, always. Yeah. yeah, and then I never brought many films. I always had a limit for myself. More, not never more than forty rolls, and um, so I had to be very economic and almost work like with a with a big uh, camera and uh, very economic and not shooting like. A, Gun, machine gun. Um, so it was not so difficult to to choose also afterwards. And um, I made a selection, and then um, every every time I had made a travel, uh, it was a pile of pictures. And then my friend Hans Asman came along, who had a very, he has a very secure look, and he went through the whole the, the whole. Uh, uh, that all the pictures I had taken in that travel and he was very secure that this is yes and this is no and uh, uh, and that was then one travel and then after the next travel we did the same thing so the pile grew higher and from that we then selected for a book. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah it is and it's uh, and also well, this this way of working together with with, with Hans Eisman and he also, of course, with Stephen Gill, you have this. Uh, he also uh, made 
quite some edits about for uh, with you for for books. Uh, was that sort of like a similar uh, way or? or uh, no, it was different. With Hans Asman, we selected together, and Stephen Gill made his own choice out of the book, out of the book that already had been. That, for instance, Hundred Summers, Hundred Winters, he made a second book about from my archive pictures that he liked and that he thought would, would make a book. So that was then. Um, uh, let's sit down before we go. Yeah. But that was selected by Stephen. And it was a surprise, of course, because the same with the, all the, the pictures that you take up to found in the book that I didn't know, didn't, uh, that were not, never published. And that was a big surprise for me and a, and a nice surprise. Yeah, I think there was also one of the, 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 this book was also, of course, reflecting on all the other books, and but also then you talk about, we decided in the book to, to, um, to use the travels as a sort of starting point and then in a chronological order, uh, starting with first at home with family pictures and then uh, I think Budapest was the first one and then uh, continuing all the way to Ireland and it, and then, then we, of course there were some, some gaps in between but also uh, I think at a certain point it was also nice to think about that it. it's not a book showing all the other works of the books. So, for instance, with Budapest, we went back to your first selection, which I quite like that it's it's uh, it, it was a bit more rough and, and my own and, selection. Yeah, your own selection. Yeah, yeah. and and um, so and then Steve uh, made a selection. Yeah. Yeah, and then and, you, so it's third selection. Yeah, exactly. And then we added some things like the Romania uh, trip you did in the early nineties, when, yeah, when the regime was happened. about to be toppled, or it was toppled already. It was the, it was already the Ceausescu regime was just gone, right? When you yeah, went yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, I came there in um, January nineteen ninety. I arrived. Yeah. yeah. And it, yeah, it all happened in eighty nine. Uh, but it, a few days before, yeah, one or two days, and then it was yeah, it was war in Budapest, shooting and and yeah, it was very exciting. And um, one of the questions was also about uh, how after a year and a half of resting, a restricted movement, uh, how is it for you? Do you? Yeah, I, I know the answer, but it's, I will. Uh, do you look forward again to travel, and is it an essential part for you? Well, first, do you look forward to travel again? Um, at the moment, no. I'm fine with this because I'm traveling in my own home with my uh, iPhone and with a Polaroid camera, and um, so that is what I'm doing now. But yeah, I think in in about half a year or so. We will start traveling again. Is it the, the, the essential part of making work also to travel? No, it's not because you also can do it at home, but yeah. but it is it is yeah. different. I know that you you were longing for the woods again and yeah, 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 yeah. nature. Yeah, that's true. No, it's different. But of course, traveling for me has always been very important because I need stimulation of uh, my curiosity being uh, fed and uh, um, seeing new things and get this um, excitement of uh, being somewhere where you come are, are a complete stranger. It's uh, and meeting other people and different people and yeah, that's important for me. This excitement, and this curiosity. But if you, if you, I mean, you can find it at home if you are clever enough. <laughs> I mean, if you know how to do it, you can find it everywhere. Yeah. Oh no, it's not true. Uh, I had I had this. Um, the Rijksmuseum gave me an assignment about the women's liberation, and that was a book also. But I don't think there's one good picture in that one. So um, it's not always true what I said. 
Yeah, one thing I was curious for, um, because when I was thinking about this conversation, and uh, um, that for me, that there's a, um, uh, it was also the, 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 how I came across with your work um, was uh, I was still in art school, or just graduated, I think, 2001, when um, it was um, yeah. this book, uh, East with West Wind, um, was, was, was published. And um, that, was, that was for me my first encounter uh, with your work. And I immediately bought the book because I, for, for a lot of reasons, I was attracted to it. And uh, for me, the, the book is really, it's, it's about, it's, it's, you dive in and, and you, you understand the images, but you also don't. And what I like specifically about this books, the book is that it, it's really, for me, it's about the flow and it's also all the, the images, uh, they are uh, well bleeding on, 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 on three sides. And the, this side is, is, is white. But I was also just graduating as a design student. So I was also looking at it from that point of view that I thought it's, it's so well done and, and it's about edit, but also I, I noticed with very small, um, uh, that like it, it is very well designed, but it's also uh, the, the design serves the, the, uh, the photographs so well. And uh, how, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and how was it to, to uh to collaborate with with uh, uh with them or was it it was done with linda or with Amma or with both linda, yeah. with linda yeah, and it's a very good cooperation yeah yeah I I, I I you can see that at, at this book and how was the edit for instance done was that done by you already or with the, by the publisher uh, for building? Uh, the edit, yes i had done that with uh, hans asma yeah but uh, then we gave her the pictures that we wanted to be in the book and she made the book. Yeah, I like this so because I was always in a very classical way, um, want to have one picture on one side of the of the book and the other one nothing and the uh, sort of uh, um, white thing around it, you know, like sort of uh, pass pas two or so. Mm -hmm. Very uh, classical, and she do, made a complete different book by. Using the whole the whole page and uh, yeah, I think it works very well. Yeah, but I, I if I look at all of your work, then I really have a weak spot for this whole this, uh, the the China work, so to say, uh, to put it. But also um, because we talked about it already. I really liked it in in the Stelic Museum. There was uh, the, there were various rooms, and every room had its own atmosphere. And um, the 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 room which was dealing with East Wind West Wind was uh, was like a uh, was a slideshow on 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 screens which were hanging from the wall. It was a dark room, so the 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 screens were illuminating, and it was. Uh, it looks cool. Uh, I'm sorry. It was see-through, yeah, and, and it was impossible to, to get an overview. So you somehow had to, as a visitor, you had to select or you had to pick a place and then simply simply watch what was coming and then focus on some things. And then you, then at least that's how it worked with me, is that working around. And, but it, does, it doesn't really make sense because it's all, it, um, you see, you cannot really get a grip, but that was really intriguing and almost like a hypnotizing it, it was such a nice way. It is also, if you talk about uh, a conventional way of, of classical way, then this was not a classical way, but it was, it, 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 it's, it was so nice to, you, you really, as a, as a viewer, I felt very, um, I had to engage with the work and I had to look and I had to make effort as well. And, and that then, then things really stick, at least that's how it works with me. And um, yeah, that's, that's um, uh, I think it's, that, that, yeah. This is about your book, the same thing. 
you do, you have to look. You have, you don't you just are hypnotized by the book. I think. Yeah, that's that's a bit what I hope, and also the, the rock and roll. <laughs> Well, I, th I think it, it starts with, uh, with the book, with the part that I really like. is uh, I like all, a lot of the layers, also the, the lists in the back, which are there, and which you, uh, because you, that was also very helpful with going through your archive, is that you are very uh, uh, precise in note, making notes. Uh, first you were writing them, and then later in the 90s you got a computer, so it became digital. Uh, you you label everything, you number everything, and you write what's what 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 what's on the images and where you took them, and um, and that's also in the back of the book together with uh, the the text from Ripsime Visser. But I also really like the start, which uh, the the first I think it's sixty four or seventy pages. Uh, I try to give a sort of overview of how it was for me to. Also, this physical aspect of of, uh, um, of the archive, like like going through the contact sheets and seeing all the stickers and notations, that was such an important layer. And I, I, one or another way, I wanted to include that in the book, that uh, that feeling of an archive. And that's that's what I like with the. the and there was also one of the most difficult things to edit to come up with a selection of scans of the, the contact sheets, which we then enlarged uh, for the book, uh, which which I think, yeah, which your life is central and, and you as a photographer, and also your archive is uh, represented in that as well. And and that was that was really, I, I, I really like that part of the book. And it's, it immediately starts on the cover actually. And the cover is actually the first page of the book and then then, then you go, go through that. And yeah, I hope that gives people as much energy as I get from other books uh, as well. But it's, it's hard to judge, of course, if you're in the middle of it. And I'm highly subjective <laughs> about, uh, sure. about this book. <laughs> it was fun, right? To yeah, it was work. much fun. Yeah. I really enjoyed it, yeah. And it's a pity. It would be uh, like perfect to... To also be in London to celebrate, but of course that's for a lot of reasons not possible at this moment. No. But let's let's celebrate once more together. Once it's really there, then I will drop by again on a, probably Thursday morning, and then we will uh, celebrate from the with the local bakery cookies and uh, some yeah. nice tea. Look forward to that, Patine. Thanks a lot. And I want to thank uh, Michael Mack for giving us the opportunity yeah. to make this beautiful book. Thank Definitely. you, Michael. Yeah, thanks a lot, Michael. I really and underline that very much. <laughs>